Most people regret that they have not bought Bitcoin earlier and not more of it. So with that being said, you recognize Bitcoin before, you could have already invested before. This is a really humbling process that Bitcoiners has to go through because you have the humbleness to say, I was wrong in the past and now I'm going into Bitcoin, even though I said it's a scam, even though I said it's a nonsense. So many Bitcoiners went through that exact thing. Bitcoin actually humbles you. You could pull out almost every one that is willing to speak and put them on a camera and they would have something of value to share. Bitcoin can only handle so much of stuff and so we have to build on top of that to bring all the applications and all the 8 billion people onto Bitcoin. No matter how many Bitcoins you have or how many Satoshis you have, you have to get self-custody otherwise you don't really own them. Today, we will watch together an episode I did with Crocs Road News, not on my podcast, but on a podcast that was on Crocs Road News where he interviewed me. And this is, I, I will do that because I was guest on other shows. So I can uh, first give other shows uh, a platform here and I can dive deeper in what I said there. And I can also give my opinion on what the host said and give more insights. Oh, did I like it? Uh, what can be improved? Uh, and what can we dive deeper in the topics and maybe have some discussions there? And um, most importantly, um, it's an older one. So I can even react to my older self. I recorded that episode with Crux Road News. Um, I think it was three months ago or four months ago. So it's it's been a while. Uh, and I was even working back then. I was uh, uh, still in my fear job or I was right out my fear job. Like it, it was something like that. Or maybe it was like in the week where I actually uh, quit my fear job. And uh, then uh, it's also interesting. How did my view on Bitcoin change over that period of time? It would be really cool uh, to watch the full uh, interview together with you. And yeah, uh, let's let's get into it. Um, let's start it from the beginning with, oh, I was actually, I see right now in the, in the thing, the Bitcoin path, I, in the beginning of my podcast, uh, in the beginning of my, beginning of my show, I still called the whole podcast, the Bitcoin path, which right now it's just called Robin Sire, uh, because, uh, yeah, it's, it's just me anyway. So why should I put like some some fancy name above me if, if, if my name is Robin Sire. So uh, it's interesting here, I was still at the Bitcoin path. Now I'm actually just Robin Sire. Uh, interesting to see that part of a history. Let's go into it. And if it would not be for Bitcoin, I would have maybe gone like complete offline and have no social media, no podcast and nothing else. And then would just concentrate on like making money and preserving it with the stock market. We can just... <laughs> No, I would not have done that. <laughs> I would definitely go on the social media route. Everyone out on the Bitcoin conference and just interview him. Because people that are now interested in Bitcoin and they're even spending money on a Bitcoin conference ticket, they know a lot of stuff and they have a unique view. And it's so interesting. That's why I like to being on conferences and meetups because you talk with Bitcoiners, you talk with people that are coming to those Bitcoin conferences and they all have like a unique view, a mm -hmm. unique perspective on it. That's amazing. That's, uh, I will I will not uh, do so many reactions, definitely. Uh, but it will be interesting to see uh, when we go in there. But uh, one thing I want to note here, when I interview Bitcoiners, there are some that are a little bit more boring. There are some that are really interesting that I never heard of before that they did their first podcast and they are from the first podcast onwards really interesting and have uh, a lot to say and really in interesting insights. Um, but the thing is, there are so many great people. And when you go to a Bitcoin meetup, when you go to a Bitcoin conference, you could pull out almost everyone that is willing to speak and put them on a camera and they would have something of value to share. It, of course, it depends on the, on the variance, but they, they would have some insights because Bitcoiners are really critical thinkers and they are deep learners. They're going deep on subjects and you just have to find out what subject they know best about 
and then go deep there. And that's kind of what I do with my podcast because I have now 150 episodes recorded. Uh, I will record now when I go to Bitcoin Prague soon, uh, now when this comes out, Bitcoin Prague was already, uh, but uh, I will I will now go to Bitcoin Prague. And uh, there are so many uh, great people there. I will do five podcasts there in person, just in the three days that I'm there. It will be really interesting to see. I'm, I'm looking forward uh, to it. Build. Uh, it's the best solution uh, for being the base layer of our financial system. This is something like we build now the TCP IP protocol of the internet. This is Bitcoin. Bitcoin is not a technology. It's not uh, this or that. It's just a protocol where we can build on top of it. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of our podcast and today I'm so happy because uh, this, our guest today, he is a person that is very, very active in, in the community, he's very, very active in Twitter, in YouTube, I don't know how much, how, how where does he get the time to do all the things that he does because he's posting like five, six videos per week, something that for me is, is quite impossible. I've been following him since uh, probably one year ago, and I I was uh, very, very, very like engaged with, with his content. And also I saw that many times Michael Saylor tagged pictures of him and, and, and connected to to his to his um, ex account. So let's go to the introduction for our guest. His name is Robin Sayer. He's from Austria. His background is in software development and also worked three years in a company doing that. Then moved to sales and had a closer relationship with clients. And in this show, he just quit and he's going full time in Bitcoin. <clears throat> his story is very well documented in his ex that we will share uh, the, the tag to, to, for you to visit it. And he heard about Bitcoin in 2017 and thought he was it was a scam until 2020, similar than Michael Saylor. Then he went into it and look and took him a year to go all in with with Bitcoin. And now in 2024, he is more all in in Bitcoin. Even he quit his job. He has a podcast where he interview big names like Chef Good, Lina Sage, or the Prince or Prince Philip of Serbia, and also he interviewed me. And he started his social media just last year, quickly grew to almost 10K on X and YouTube, plus more is building. Robin, welcome to our podcast. Hello, thank you for inviting me, Fernando. Thank you for coming. Just was This this project was like, he contacted our, my business partner first, then we were supposed yeah. to do some podcasts and upload uh, at the same time in, in both YouTube account. But I say, no, better do one your style, one my style, and yes. let the algorithm think that we are like just stealing. So, and as he is full, 100% full time on Bitcoin, he has the time to to come to, to our podcast today. So thanks again for being here. Yes, I, I'm actually right now in the process of uh, turning down my job and ramping up full time uh, Bitcoin content creation, Bitcoin, working with Bitcoin companies. I work really closely with 21 Bitcoin. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's 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 an honor to have this kind of uh, job that you can work for Bitcoin uh, full time. Until now, I made it like that I work part time and on the weekends for Bitcoin. As you mentioned, I have five podcasts that I publish every week. Five podcasts a week uh, is like one hour of preparation for the guest, one hour and a half to record it and post-production and stuff like that. So like with five, it accumulates really quickly. Uh, so it's really nice now that I can focus full time on Bitcoin. Uh, I think the focus and it's it's even uh if it's even, <laughs> it's even more with seven per week uh so now i do seven like every day actually every day when i say every day most people think that i do five a day uh five a week with monday to uh friday but i actually do like monday to sunday saturday and sunday for me it's also working day uh one thing that i uh, i got to know about before like uh, before the interview started and in, in the trailer it was uh, the TCP IP protocol. And this is something really interesting. This is the, the thing that I always say. 
Bitcoin is the TCP IP protocol. This is something that I've been saying for a long time. This is something that I've said like years, years ago, one, two years ago, <laughs> years ago, I was not in, in Bitcoin anyways. And the TCP IP protocol comparison basically is when we have um, TCP IP and then we have all the other layers on top of that. So Facebook is not the layer one technology. There is something underneath it all, and then there is underneath it all, and then the layers build on top of each other. And when we now come to uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin can only handle so much of stuff. And so we have to build on top of that to bring all the applications and all the 8 billion people onto Bitcoin. Or everything will not be on the base layer. This will not be happening. And I'm also, because he also talked about Michael Saylor and how he tagged me in, 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 in pictures. Now I'm actually interviewing him on my podcast soon, uh, actually in person in, in Prague. I'm looking really forward to that. And this will also one of, be one of my questions. I, I think this will be one of my questions that I still have to figure out how many questions I can, I can get into like this one, two hour that I have with him. Uh, but I think this is one of my questions that I have how the future of Bitcoin, of scaling Bitcoin looks like and what applications we can build on top because MicroStrategy also with MicroStrategy Orange is now building something on top of Bitcoin, which is really exciting that they're not only talking about Bitcoin, not only uh, investing in, uh, in Bitcoin, but now also building in Bitcoin, which is amazing. Uh, I love it a lot what they're doing uh, and will be interesting uh, what they're building and, and what they are doing there exactly. And yeah, this is uh, uh, basically it with the TCPIP protocol. Bitcoin is the base layer of our financial world. Uh, will allow me to uh, be even more integrated in the Bitcoin community and uh, maybe uh, have even more value for the Bitcoin community. Yes, yeah, so this is something that that I we, we are like interviewing people who have, have podcasts, who have like um, other newsletters, and for us. We are not competitors. We are all parts of the same community. And I think that everyone from, from their, their side or their project adds value to this Bitcoin community that is super young. We are super early. So let's start with the interview. And I don't ask to, because if you are Bitcoiner, you don't ask how many Bitcoins you have. But I like to ask, how were you on a spiel, Robin? Uh, that was an interesting story, and, and you mentioned it in the in the in the introduction that I thought Bitcoin is a scam for three years uh, because I was in this warm Buffett mindset. I was like, Bitcoin is uh, not useful for society because it has no cash flow. That was such a stupid thought of mine, <laughs> but I had it. I was really in that uh, it has to have a cash flow. It has to have some something that works for me. And this is usually stocks. And I was uh, actually quite successful with, with stocks. I had some really, really good uh, gainers in there. Uh, but uh, the overall problem that I wanted to solve, uh, especially also for other people that are in uh, my environment that uh, came up to me like, how do you do it with stocks? How do you pick stocks and stuff like that? The overall problem I always wanted to solve, even though I didn't knew it at the time, was how do I store my wealth? Uh, and how to preserve my wealth through storing that uh, that in in some some vehicle, and this is actually not as easy as it seems. Just like oh yeah, I work, then uh, I get energy. How do I save it? And I started this process with like 18 years old. I got some extra money from grandma, uh, like it was like a few hundred euros or something like that, and I was like, I have everything. Uh, I don't need anything more. Like I don't. Uh, I I was always a savings person. Like because I was young, I had a roof over my head because of my parents. I I, I had uh, everything that I need for like food and shelter and all this stuff. Uh, and I I was never the type of guy that was like wanted fancy things. Other people would have gone out and bought like maybe a, the newest phone or like a PlayStation or something. I don't know. Uh, but I was like, yeah, what, what can I do with that money? And first of all, like, yeah, let's put it in a savings account. This did not do a lot. 
it was just like laying there. I think the the rates was like 0.01%. I got like a few cents every quarter. Uh, and uh, then I was like, yeah, let's, let's, let's do something else with it. And then I was researching about um, index funds, ETFs and all those uh, stuffs. And I bought some ETF. It got me like 2% uh, profit in a year. And with all the fees I had to pay, it was almost zero. <laughs> so <laughs> the fees took everything away from me. And then over uh, such, uh, over like a small period of time, I was like, let's let's figure out the stocks. Like, can I can I invest in stocks? Can I pick stocks? And yeah, and then I went ahead on, and picked stocks. I was really terrible at first. Then I was better and better over time and the interesting thing i was really successful in like the last few like in the last few years where it and the main thing here is uh, what i'm trying to convey in a very long uh, way that uh, it's my usual way of speaking i speak very long and then make a lot of points but the main thing here that i wanted to uh, get away and and, and and put really down is if you genuinely try to get your savings in a correct way, when you when you recognize the problem of how do I secure my financial energy, you will figure out Bitcoin eventually. And this is kind of the, the way that I'm talking uh, towards my history. I started out with the savings, then I got into stocks and uh, ETFs and all the other crap that I was in there and it, eventually I got to Bitcoin and I think everyone that genuinely asks this question where can I store my financial energy will eventually come to Bitcoin that there's no like how can you come to anything else at this point stocks picking like picking individual stocks and I was invested in, in Tesla in a huge run-up, like in a really, really huge run-up. I think, I don't know, it was like over a thousand percent I actually gained with Tesla alone. Uh, there was also some losers in there. So like it was not like a big because like in a portfolio, you always have some losers and some winners in there. And then from that moment onwards, uh, it was like 2017 to 2020, I was investing in stocks. And then in 2020, more and more people kept asking me, hey, what is this Bitcoin thing? You are doing good in the stock market. Why don't you have any allocation to Bitcoin? And then there was long one friend, we discussed about Bitcoin. And I discovered that in the discussion with him, I discovered that I actually don't have too, too good, I don't have a good arguments against Bitcoin. And on that thought, I was like, I want to prove him wrong. And this was like a Friday afternoon discussion with him. And then I went ahead and go, went home. And this weekend I had no, no plans really. So I just went home and Saturday, Sunday, no plans, canceled everything that I had, like small things. And then I was like, yeah, let's, let's dive deep into Bitcoin to prove my friend wrong. So I can call him on Monday and tell him what's wrong with Bitcoin. The funny thing is, on Sunday evening, I was like, that's maybe something like that. <laughs> maybe I am the one that's wrong here. And on Monday, I created my Coinbase account. I thought at that time, this is the most, the, the best exchange. And this is another amazing point. I have no clue how long will this video go when I interrupt myself so much. <laughs> but I think it's important to note here, um, almost everyone that comes into Bitcoin saw Bitcoin before. So they saw Bitcoin at like maybe 2016 and then they came into in 2019, 2020, whatever the time frame is. Uh, they probably seen Bitcoin before they came in. Only rarely people are like, ah, I see Bitcoin, so let's directly jump into it all in and let's invest re really a lot. Most people regret that they have not bought Bitcoin earlier and not more of it. So with that being said, you recognize Bitcoin before, you could have already invested before. This is a really humbling process that Bitcoin, Bitcoiners has to go through because you have the humbleness to say, I was wrong in the past and now, I, and now I'm going into Bitcoin 
even though I said it's a scam, even though I said it's uh, nonsense. Uh, and so many Bitcoiners went through that exact thing. Uh, so without uh, without being too dramatic, but uh, Bitcoin actually humbles you. Uh, and this will stop at some point because Bitcoin will be so obvious and, 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 and there's like peer pressure and there's like a lot of adoption coming to Bitcoin in, in, in a totally different way. So this humbling process, I don't think will continue forever. Um, I might be wrong here actually. Uh, but it, it will continue for uh, some time, de definitely. <laughs> Again, I was wrong, but at least I got some Bitcoin from that. In the first week, this is also, I think, different to many other people. Uh, in the first week, I bought my ledger. Like in the first week I ever got into Bitcoin, I instantly knew that this is something important to put your uh, Bitcoin in self-custody. I didn't knew why it was important. But uh, I felt like I want to try everything out in the Bitcoin ecosystem. So instantly in the first week, I bought my ledger and I put everything, like I bought 100 euros with it, 100 euros of Bitcoin. And then I put my 100 euros of Bitcoin under the ledger. And then because I wanted to try it out, I did also the reverse from like bank account to Coinbase to ledger. 50 euros of that I put back from uh, the ledger to Coinbase account again back to the bank. I just wanted to familiarize with everything and see how it works. And this was basically the orange pilling moment. I wanted to prove my friend wrong. And the funny thing is from that moment onwards, it took me a year from having a big... Uh, And this is uh, another point that I want to, to, to make uh, and not to like only call out my, my sponsor uh, with, with Bitbox now. I, I was in Ledger before and now I'm in Bitbox. Um, uh, and and I, I like the company a lot. I like the employees there a lot. Uh, I'm in contact with them uh, and obviously they are my sponsors. Uh, so <laughs> take it with a grain of salt. But I, I, I personally love them and I personally use them. Uh, I, I liked it a lot. Uh, I will also... Maybe let me know in the comments if, if you are interested in me making a video about self-custody. I have gained a lot of insights uh, through my interviews. Uh, also, when I talked with, with the Bitcoiners offline, uh, not recorded, uh, because some share a little bit more when, when, when the camera is not on and it's not recorded. Uh, so I, I'm, I think I should um, really share a step-by-step -step guide on oh you have so many bitcoins that should be your self custody plan uh, and and this is what I'm I will probably try to do in 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 some amount of time uh, when I can get in, into it but uh, the, the most important point is get self custody in some 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 way uh, it's 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 no, no matter how many bitcoins you have or how many satoshis you have you have to get self custody otherwise you don't really own them Uh, and yes, I'm aware that at some point we will move to layer two and most of them will move to layer two because not everyone will, uh, will, will be able to compete for the layer one space. Uh, but even on layer two, there is uh, non-custodial and custodial solutions. So be even on layer two with, with self-custody. It's way better than to keep it on exchange or anything stupid like that. Portfolio and 100 euros, really small allocation to Bitcoin, to going all in in Bitcoin. In 2021, then I was all in. And this was the crazy time, the one year to get educated. Because then you you read every weekend, you watch podcasts, you, you're going really deep in the rabbit hole. And uh, Michael Saylor was uh, also really... Um, Um, yeah, forming uh, my uh, forms about that and opening up uh, a lot of thoughts a big, because I think I came from the stock world and he as a CEO of a public traded company talks to investors like he, he knows how to talk to investors. Uh, Anthony Pompliano, now I don't like him as much, uh, but uh, at the time uh, he also gave me a lot of insights and learned a lot. Uh, and to no, um, uh, the Andreas Antonopoulos, uh, he was also someone. And the final one was the Bitcoin standard for me. <laughs> Once I heard that one, it was a little later in, in, in my journey. Uh, I think um, end of 2020, maybe. Uh, this was like the final nail in the coffin. Then I was like, this is it. 
Uh, and from that moment onwards, I was like orange build. And then we can go ahead on a little bit further, even like the orange build moment in 2021, when I got all in in Bitcoin. 2023, I started taking my Bitcoin Twitter account seriously. I grew from 400 uh, in the beginning from last year to now 9,300, 9,400 something uh, that I have now. Uh, yeah, and in middle of the year, uh, I started also video formats. Uh, and then in December, I started my podcast. Like it's now not old because like now it's February. And in December, I started my podcast. I already interviewed really, really cool guys. Uh, and not even like only this, the, the big one is like, there's so many small Bitcoin blabs out there that I interviewed with like a hundred followers, uh, that, uh, um, the, I think my third interview uh, opened my eyes a little bit. Uh, he said, Bitcoin is a system based on love. And this was something I never heard before, <laughs> but he explained it so well. And so it's like, uh, e even like. Jeff Booth, of course, was on, uh, Lina Seiche, you yourself was on, like a lot of really cool guys were on, uh, but uh, y you always heard them before. So for me, it's uh, really interesting to hear even the smaller creators that are uh, the first time on the, in their life on the podcast. I had already five guests on that were the first time on a podcast on my podcast. And this is something also really amazing. But of course, Jeff Booth and Lina Seiche and all, all those guys were uh, they are more experienced. Uh, they have uh, knowledge, so much to share. There's everything. Every time you hear them talk, something new in there. Yeah. So my yeah. really long orange peeling story. Sorry, so I'm going too long. No, there. it's it's like it's good because everyone has a different different orange peel, and and you are the first one that starts the orange peeling, like trying to prove your friend that was wrong about Bitcoin. Because <laughs> until now. I, I all the guys that I interview, m the most of them like they they went one hundred percent with 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 uh, sailor. I I don't know if I'm the only one. I think probably I'm not the only one who got orange built by pro trying to prove someone wrong. It's a difficult difficult process to go through when you go with the mindset in learning something, uh, and you want to prove someone wrong. Uh, and then you're like, oh shit, I'm wrong. <laughs> I proved, I proved myself wrong. Uh, and I think this is something that's not, not easy. Uh, uh, at the time it was not that bad actually for me. It, it was like, oh, okay. I was wrong about that. But, uh, as, as time grows on and you get more experience and you learn more, uh, it kind of got, it, it gets for some reason. And there's not a good reason for that. Uh, for some reason it gets more difficult uh, to overcome your past issues <laughs> that will be yeah uh, but uh, i'm definitely uh, probably not the only one here i'm not i'm not that unique <laughs> but uh, I, I appreciate it many of them also heard about bitcoin in the early beginnings like me but thought that was took us a long time to understand what was really bitcoin but you are the first one but every one of us trust in bitcoin from the day zero but you are the first one that thought that Bitcoin was a scam and trying to prove them wrong, you discovered that it's not a scam and you are now 100% into Bitcoin. And this is great because that's the, the way the thing, because sometimes you say, okay, this is a scam, but you say this is a scam because most of the people say that something is a scam. But when you study, then you get your conclusion. Probably your conclusion is that this is a scam and probably your conclusion is that it's not. In your case, you discover a different world. Yeah, it's also interesting because when you study something, you can always find an argument for everything. And I didn't want to just find an argument to uh, prove a friend wrong. I really want to under wanted to understand it. So I searched why Bitcoin, why does Bitcoin make sense? Like I intentionally uh, searched for the other side because I was on that side. And I didn't want to have confirmation bias with having just like hearing from people that has have my opinion. Because when you just Google Bitcoin, is Bitcoin a good idea? Is Bitcoin a bad idea? You can go a deep uh, road also down where you end up where like, oh, yes, Bitcoin is a scam. If you are listening to this podcast, you might be wondering what is actually the setup look like of Robin. 
or how can I improve my Bitcoin setup? And there's two things. You have to buy Bitcoin from the right source and you have to store Bitcoin the right way. Let's focus on the first thing how to buy bitcoin it's simple have a bitcoin only exchange don't deal with the shitcoin exchanges don't deal with an exchange that has an own token or something like that be on a bitcoin only exchange i use 21 bitcoin 21 bitcoin is for me the best partner for that and now where do you store bitcoin bitcoin should be stored on a hardware wallet on a self custody solution where you yourself hold your keys and it should be a cold wallet so that's my simple solutions. That's a bit box. You just put your Bitcoin on there, back up your seed phrase, and you are better than 95% of all Bitcoin hodlers. If you have more than a thousand euros in Bitcoin, it's an absolutely must have. I think this is what um, most of the time happens with Bitcoiners or not non-Bitcoiners or shitcoiners. Um, they get, they see Bitcoin, and then they get in a bubble outside of the Bitcoin bubble. Uh, and in their bubble, there are a lot of arguments that mostly are completely BS, uh, but some have some, some value to it. They have some legitimacy uh, to do their, um, yeah, to their uh, argument. Uh, but most of them are completely BS. When you have that situation, and you come into that group. The interesting thing is, if you are completely objective and you see the arguments by itself, by its facts, then you know it's bullshit. But there are a lot of people saying that. And if a lot of people saying something, we are humans are weirdly wired. If a lot of people say something, we just take it for granted. You're like, oh yeah, it's 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 true. If everyone in your family, in your close environment is saying one thing about a thing like one direction about one thing you are really inclined in believing that uh but it's not always the case uh and that's uh why i kudos those bitcoiners that broke out of that fiat mindset about all that shitcoin crypto mindset and i love having the podcast with so many <laughs> so many great minds that actually broke out of exactly that system <laughs> Yeah, you can take this road down. But I intentionally wanted to find out about why Bitcoin makes sense. Because even if even if we now, like if I wanted to prepare for a Bitcoin versus Ethereum um, debate, I would study the other side really carefully. Because this is how they think. And when you know how the other side thinks, you can better uh, debate and uh, argue against uh, the other side. But in preparation of, of, of that, I discovered the other side uh, and uh, was switching to the other side slowly. And this, this is uh, also like something I wanted to give to every listener is always be open to everything and never close your eyes. Like, of course, we have to call out shit coins that there are scams and stuff like that. But we should never be like... Uh, I will not talk about this at all. Like we should always be open. Yeah, Although some... I believe that all altcoins are shit coins, <laughs> well, this... uh, but we still have to be open to everything. This is something that we were, my business partner was telling me the other day because I'm a little bit extra extremist with the things that I, I, I don't like. And the other day we were in a, we were in a, in the Bitcoin meetup in Hong Kong that, that is once a month. And there was a guy pitching some shit coin, uh, and he was in the right place. And I was like making fun of him. And then my business partner said, you need to listen to the person, even though you know that it's like, a, like it's a scam. Try to find a way, try, don't be so skeptical because probably you end up, I don't know, discovering something. And the good thing that you say, if you want to do a debate between Bitcoin and Ethereum, you are going to study a lot of Ethereum to see yes. what is the difference, because there is a book about what that, that is the art of war, that you need to know the enemy 100%, even though like Ethereum is not the enemy. But if, if you go to argue against something, you need to study a lot this thing to understand what it is. Yeah, definitely. I would make the argument that Ethereum is an enemy of Bitcoin. Um, it takes, like, there are two sides to it. First of all, I think that all the altcoins 
Ethereum, all the Solana, every, all the altcoins basically are a test net for Bitcoin. We've seen that in history, uh, something gets uh, tried out there and, and, and we can see if we can try it out on Bitcoin or not. Um, but honestly, um, and then there's the argument that a testnet has some kind of a value, like if it's actually a testnet, uh, it can have some value. But I don't know if we even need it. I don't know if we need that testnet. I don't know if, if we actually need a testnet for Bitcoin because Bitcoin is actually quite great and uh, you should not experiment too much with the base layer anyways. Uh, so in that sense, I'm saying why why that testnet uh, is even existing so on a more broader scale ethereum uh steals away a little bit of the focus and steals away is serves as a distraction for the overall bitcoin mission and it's not bad because it might uh slow down the process of bitcoin adoption and might slow down this this fiat system collapsing a little bit uh, in a broader sense um, and it's not bad because I always make that Titanic um, example also where you you don't want the Titanic to sink too fast so the other people are able or the people on the Titanic are able to get on the live rafts, on the live boats, on the live whatever uh, and you can save them because if the fiat system sinks like in the next few weeks or months then we have a bigger problems than Bitcoin. Uh, and, and Ethereum and all, all those things. Bitcoin will be a live raft, but not a lot of people will be like onboarded in just a few weeks. So that that will be, the Titanic should sink slowly, slowly, slowly. There's a saying like, hold your friends close and your enemies even closer, something yeah, like that. Yeah, that, that, that's, <laughs> and, and, and when, and, and when, because your journey is like so great because you started, you, you discovered Bitcoin, uh, you thought that it was a scam. Then you discover like as most of the new people, like during the, 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 the 2021, 2020, during the pandemic, um, based on Sailor, I think that Sailor was the first person because uh, until Sailor, we had the people that was so technical, some economists that we didn't understand what really was Bitcoin, unless you were so into Austrian economics, but Sailor was the one that bring the Bitcoin and put on on Earth and explain what it was, and um, and also you you start doing a great career in the content creation space and and when you started and why did you start it, the the this project of of content creation because you come from a total to, totally different angle that is the the software development so how. Why and when did you start it with this educational content? Uh, it's an interesting question because um, I started creating content around the stocks in 2020. And a, a, a part of me already wanted to stop content creating and stop social media totally. And if it would not be for Bitcoin, I would have maybe gone like complete offline and have no social media, no podcast and nothing else. And then would just concentrate on like making money and preserving it with the stock market. Uh, and I did not find a lot. The, I, I don't think it's the case anymore. <laughs> I, I think um, even if Bitcoin wasn't there, uh, I would probably make like financial content. I would make content how to pick stocks and stuff like that because this is what I really was passionate about. I'm still passionate about picking stocks actually. I just don't do it anymore because right now the best value is in Bitcoin. But Bitcoin will be at some point boring or not as uh, valuable anymore or, or way more valuable than now but not as fast growing anymore so then it makes maybe sense to reinvest something in in the, in the stock market uh, maybe reinvest something in, in venture capitalist uh, stuff maybe reinvest something in companies stocks whatever it is uh, it makes a lot of fun to stay up till 2 in the 2 a.m in the morning because i'm in in, in austria and, and i listen to the companies in america to the stock calls in, in, the, in the earning calls in the middle of the night it was a lot of fun this this times and uh, i i missed those days a little bit and i loved it so much and uh, i might get into it 
uh, at some point right now there's no other value for me than bitcoin uh, that might change in 10 years or five years whatever like depending on how quickly bitcoin now goes closer to its full potential uh, i might never start again again uh, but i don't think that's the case uh, and and i think i always have uh, always had a big feeling in me that I have to speak with other people and I want to share my stories and share my journey with with the internet with everyone so I think I would have gotten into content creation in some sort of sense um so uh, I <laughs> I did say uh, some bs here definitely uh, but uh, is in, it is interesting how I thought about things a few months ago bitcoiners offline <laughs> I orange built some friends, uh, definitely. Like I orange built uh, my my best friends, even like my my small cousin. He's like a really bit uh, big Bitcoiner now. Uh, like even my dad is now orange built. Like I orange built some of my environment already. Nice. Most of them, uh, if you look at the wider family, are really skeptical. Uh, still, also in the company where I uh, like now quit, there's also like a, a lot of skeptics, and there's some that are also orange built, like one or two um, in there. But I think it was just to find uh, some community to talk to at first. Like I was just on Twitter. I was. Uh, like how my Twitter started is actually a nice story. I wanted to find news and I just reposted the news that I found nice so I can find it afterwards better. And then at some point, I, uh, then all of a sudden I got like 100 uh, followers just from that for some reason. I did not even write anything. I just like reposted it and people saw me maybe i I, re I replied to some and maybe like oh that's an interesting thought like let's follow robin and then i also started uh writing to the news that i reposted with some comments and then i got even more followers like it was like 150 200 followers then and the interesting part was then i was like hmm interesting i don't do any work uh for getting followers but I get followers. So I was like, let's try to make it more uh, regular. And I started posting once a day, twice a day, three times a day and stuff like that. And then more and more. And then at like a thousand followers, I had the decision to make, do I want to make it professionally or not? This was like beginning of uh, 2023. Beginning, I had like 600 followers uh, between 1,000 in the February, something like that. Uh, I don't remember exactly the, the count. And uh, there I was like, okay, I want to do professionally. I switched also from German to English. Uh, so I switched from my local language, German, to my, my second language, uh, English, which is now kind of getting to my main language because my girlfriend is from India, so she does not understand German, so I speak English with her. In the company, I spoke a lot of, uh, spoke a lot of English, now I have once a day at least one interview uh, that uh, I have on the podcast. So I speak their English also. <laughs> so my English is getting my, I, I'm, I'm converting to an English standard, I guess. <laughs> yes, this, this happened. This happened like when, when you start interacting in English so much, like happened to me sometimes. And the point is that you have the advantage with, with your language because you still live in Austria. I yeah. in Hong Kong far away from my mother language that is the Spanish. So sometimes I try to speak Spanish with my friends in Argentina and I forget. <laughs> and I say, oh, how do you say this word? I'm losing my... And, and when I went last time to... to I used to mi talk a, a mix between English, Spanish and, and all this shit. So... Continue. Yes, it's... Uh, it, it's 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 an actual problem uh, when you talk so much so much English uh, and and when you're now listening from America and you mostly speak English uh, and it's your native language. Uh, you, I, maybe you cannot relate to that, but people that are having a native language, for example, Dutch, uh, German, Spanish, French, whatever, and they are speaking a lot of English and they are consuming a lot of content in English, like me also, like. Everything I watch is English. Everything I do is English. Uh, and after some time, it just gets like um, it's it's 
<laughs> it's it's funny how it goes, but it's um, it's not it's not as uh, fluent than the German anymore. And this is uh, it's it's a weird thing what's happening there, but uh, it's it's a real thing. Uh, and and I forget words in in German when I speak with other Bitcoins in German. All of a sudden, I'm like, oh, what? How can I explain it in German? I will only explain it in English because especially in Bitcoin. Uh, I talk most of the Bitcoin stuff with Bitcoiners all around the world in English. Uh, this It just gets uh, to an interesting point where I talk a lot of English and I forget a little bit my mother language <laughs> at some point. Yeah. It's also interesting because when I explain someone in my local language, German, uh, uh, Bitcoin, it's hard for me because everything I consume is English. Like I consume... 90% of all the mm. content in English. Well, let me let me yeah. let me p p tell you like and an, some something like I started this podcast in English, but as as different to you, our, our my my mother language has one billion speakers. So I start also uh, interviewing people in Spanish. That is much easier for me. And but when I start trying to switch the the the, the first question, like how were you on a spiel? I don't know how to do it in Spanish because I don't know in Spanish on a spiel is spiel uh, naranja, but I don't know if they call it like this. So <laughs> that was uh, that, yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, in uh, the in in German we also say a lot of English words. Like yeah. there are so many English words in uh, the German language also. No, and yeah. you and the, the, all the German people that I know, or even Austria, because they have friends here that are from Austria. Of course, the level of English that you have are so much be better than the the ones that we come from 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 Spanish background. So I think it, it's easier. Yeah, it also depends who you meet. Uh, a lot of Austrians that cannot speak uh, good good English, for example, my. My mother, she, she struggles with my girlfriend because she cannot understand. But there is like uh, the younger generation in, in Austria usually has a good English. Like we learn English in school. It's really important. We do a lot of presentations in English. We are doing uh, everything in the school in English. Uh, and so when you live up in Austria and you're under 20 years old, you should have quite good English. Um, and for me, it was especially easier after some time because i had like an, an, a trip to malta once where i was one month in malta having uh, only exposure to english this is where i trained a lot of english then i speak a lot of english also in the company where i've been like for six years now and now also with the podcast i think uh, yeah so and coming back to the, the origin so you you start uh, switching from german to english yeah and and then the accounts start growing. Yes, I mean the 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 language switch was, I think, the smaller part in the the growing part. It was just like, yes, it's a wider audience, but it has also more competitors. Uh, there are more competitors. I say like, there's there's more supply from English speaker and more demand from English speaker, of course. So it, there's a balance to it, I think. Um, and uh, yeah, growing the. I get asked that a lot. Uh, why do I do an English podcast? Why do I do it not in German when I'm German? There's one really simple uh, answer to that. I don't like to talk only with Germans, Austrians and Swiss people. <laughs> Those are the ones who understand German. So I want to... I want to talk with Indians. I want to talk with Africans. I want to talk with Canadians, Australians, Americans, with everyone around the world. Uh, if I want to do that... Unfortunately, AI live synchronization is not there yet, uh, so I have to do it in English. So that's 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 common sense and basic uh, human knowledge. Uh, and <clears throat> in in German, we actually have quite good speakers. We have a great podcaster with Nico Yilch. We have great people that make everyday live streams like Roman and and Sunny Degree. It's like it. I, I don't need to get into Bitcoin podcasting in German because there are a lot of German, great German uh, podcasters. There are also a lot of great German, uh, great English podcasters and content creators. So I can freely choose. I don't have to fill a, fill a hole in a market, a gap in a market. 
I just have to go wherever I want to be. And English is my place. English is, I speak English with my girlfriend. I speak English with all my guests. I speak English with most of my friends till now. Uh, I speak English more, way more now than I speak German. It's weird for me to speak German. It's, it, it's getting weird for me to speak German because I speak so much English. And I understand my English is not the best and it will never be. Uh, uh, I, I will probably be never as good in English as as yeah, native English speakers, but I guess I get more fluent in it, and I guess I get uh, a little bit more settled in in English, uh, and it will be interesting to see. I, I I'm actually really interested in, in like comparing the first podcast with the, the the last podcasts that I do on my podcast with uh, the English level and English skills that I have, but I don't. I don't think it got got that much better, uh, and uh, it's it's also not that important as long as I'm understandable for the audience. It seems that people are okay with me having a little bit less of English skills. It was interesting because I was like, if I dedicate to growing a social media account, I should be really active. So I uh, dedicated myself to doing eight tweets a day. And now, actually, I do 12 tweets every day uh, that I post out as an original tweets. And with the replies, last year, I got over 50 tweets per day, like eight that I put out and uh, the rest, like the 42 that are remaining, are replies to every person. And that's really interesting to see um, when you put out a lot of tweets, uh, you put out a lot of shit. And you put out a lot of good stuff and your brain recognizes it. Like you get really good in writing tweets when you write so many tweets because you get the positive and negative feedback loop. You're putting out a lot of tweets, then, oh, this tweet all, all, um, all of a sudden gets 100K impressions. Then you read it and you're like, ah, oh, okay, this, this works. And then there's like, oh, this got 500 impressions. <laughs> and this actually is still uh, like I have now almost uh, 10k followers some tweets get um, i think my most successful was around half a million impressions and i get a lot of a uh, lot of tweets like uh, i don't know at least once a month i get one tweet above 100k above 200k and i still have tweets that get only 500 impressions which is amazing that that uh, there can be tweets with 500 impressions and 500,000 impressions so I still get that feedback loop and then I still iterate. I'm still really early in finding out how can I best serve the Bitcoin community? Because this, this is at, uh, in the end of the day, because I want to find out how can I uh, provide value to the Bitcoin community? Because if I provide value, they will like it, they will repost it, they will comment on it, they will share it. And then when they do all those stuff, it gets to a bigger audience. And then I get the value back because I get a bigger audience and a bigger recognition in the community. It's like value for value. Give give value in the community, and the community will uh, provide you back with with value. And then in uh, December or November, actually, uh, because I was growing, I had more and more contact with uh, people in the Bitcoin sphere. So people were saying like, "Hey, should we go on a Zoom call? Hey, do you want to do this and stuff?" So I was starting to have some zoom calls with some bitcoiners and just talking about bitcoin and life in general and at the same time i was like i go to this bitcoin conferences most of them have seen robin sire but nobody knows me so i was like i will still then i have another decision to make do i want people to know my face with the name and bitcoin associated yes or no i was like yes i want that i want to be more integrated in the bitcoin community i want to do more for the bitcoin community and this was basically the time where I was like, okay, I have to have a video format. And then I started the podcast, I started everything. And yeah, this is, uh, this is basically how I, I, I put a lot of stuff out there and try to learn along the way. This is basically my strategic because I get asked actually sometimes in my DMs, oh, how did you grow the account? How did you do this? I'm like, tweet eight tweets a day for uh, at least a year. If you, yeah, it's it's like, what's the secret sauce to growing an account? What's the secret sauce to to be better in content creation? Or uh, what's the secret sauce to basically be better in anything? 
yeah, you have to do a lot of freaking work. <laughs> like you have to uh, step up your game and you have to do the repetitions. You have to do the repetitions every day. You have to do the repetitions uh, with a lot of actions. I did a lot of tweets. I do now a lot of podcasts and I will get really good in it. Uh, and uh, the same thing when you want to have muscles, you have to go every day in the gym. You have to do all the things uh good and you will get better with time you will learn with time and no matter what you want to do you will get better with repetition and the secret sauce the secret sauce to success in any way shape or form do a lot of action and you will get there it's not the only thing that you have to consider but um with the with the a lot of action with the lot of repetition you get the insights and the connections to actually level up and and get where you actually want to be mm-hmm. Uh, then uh, leave it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> because this is then just something you you. It's it's not it's not yours. But uh, it's it's almost impossible to not succeed if you put out eight original tweets where you think about it and you try really hard to do it good for over a year because you will get better. Like your first, they will be bad, but then you get better. It's part of the proof of work. It's part of the proof of work that everything in life does so everything as as i spoke with you in your podcast that you made a great short uh if if everything you you do in your life you do it following the bitcoin standard no matter what it is no matter if it's bitcoin no matter what it is it's gonna be successful that's the that's the main point but you need to do the proof of work as you do yeah i think it's really important that whatever you are doing you should do it in a way that you're proud of it like never put something out you're like ah i don't know if this is good like uh, maybe in twitter you can test a little bit like you can uh, try with shitty tweets also like say, ah, see let's how 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 people react because twitter forgets a lot like even if you put out bad things the the community forgets uh fast i think uh but like just just try to to uh, make something that you can be proud of and this is yes. what i'm, I'm what talking I'm about i'm talking about that 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 now is your main activity what is your objective of on this field of, of content creation educational content about bitcoin i mean i have in my twitter bio is i think the one sentence i will not shut up about bitcoin till it's the base layer of our financial system <laughs> yes. um, that, that's the main goal that, that's the main goal there's always like uh, i think there's always to everything uh, there's incentives and there's uh, a greater goal for incentives for the society. There's greater goals for incentives for yourself. And of course, for myself, this would be uh, um, increasing, as Knut would say, my personal freedom footprint, because then I'm not touched to a location. I can do this wherever I want. Uh, I can be a little bit more free with what I uh, what I do, because when I can 100% control uh in the day what i do that frees myself and this will i think i hope also unlock a lot of creativity and a lot of uh, better content and will even increase more uh, of of the um traction that my channels do um this is just the personal goals but the the societal thing the 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 thing why i do it with bitcoin because i could also talk about stocks i could also talk about sports i could also talk about so many other topics i could also talk now about how to grow a twitter channel like i i i I could talk about so many uh things in my channels uh but i specifically want to talk about bitcoin because for me this is the most important thing you can spend your time in we are now in the phase where we are uh like in the early internet before the 2000 uh before 2000 uh, dot com bubble we are before that e- event where everything is so new and you just have to be involved and just have to be educated in that uh bitcoin sphere uh to know what's going on because the iphone is still 10 years away to develop the the facebook is still a few years away from being developed and started like youtube is not existing right now and all those applications all those layers all those payment things that we will uh, develop they are not even born now there will be killer applications on top of bitcoin that we 
payment service on top of Bitcoin that will be so great for humanity that where where the founder is not even working on it right now. Yes. <laughs> the yes. company is still still on the right. So so we are so early and it's so interesting the whole sphere. And if I can do for the community just interview like 200, 300 people every year when I do like five, maybe when I cannot do it full time, maybe I can even do it like every day an interview and publish it every day. This would be actually my goal. Then I can document everything what's going on. I can invite the most interesting persons uh, and all the plebs that are involved in the Bitcoin community and, and build like a really, really cool um, um, collection of minds what we think right now of Bitcoin. And like just looking back, like how cool would it be to have a podcast about internet from yeah. 1995 where someone just interviewed everyone involved in the space and this is what i wanted to create and this is amazing what you say because uh it's it's so important for me to jump in here because um i want to create something that's even bigger uh or that's even beyond bitcoin i want to have educational entertainment con educational content entertainment content i want to have historical content with bitcoin i want to have uh, a lot of great content so you can level up in the bitcoin uh, uh in the bitcoin sphere you can learn more about bitcoin but you can also learn more about life and in general uh, maybe business maybe marketing maybe other things so like uh, my main thing will probably be Bitcoin for a very long time. Uh, but as you've noticed, I've gone into other topics every once in a while uh, on my podcast. And uh, when you have a one hour, two hour conversation with someone, you go into other topics also. And they are connected to Bitcoin always. Uh, but you learn a lot uh, about life and, and work and, and, and philosophy and meditation and all that 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 stuff you learn a lot from it so uh, this is what i'm really passionate about and i'm also working with other creators that uh, that that are uh, creating stuff on new formats that i might bring on my channel or bring on new channels so uh, stay tuned there are a lot of things are coming uh, and i have a lot of things planned for uh, this this channel what I say, what if we could have a podcast about internet? For sure, there might be videos, there might be, but now we are documenting Bitcoin. Everything yes. of what we're doing, and, and I agree with you, um, I have a lot of things to talk about too. I, I can talk a lot about the sports, of entrepreneurship, market, a lot of things, but I think that the most important thing that I can dedicate my time to, to share a message is about Bitcoin because it's going to disrupt the humanity as we know it. And um, also, as you said, there are things that are going to be created that the CEOs are not creating yet. Yes. And also, we are documenting all this revolution. And in the future, when the people look back, they are going to have these conversations of the early Bitcoin state, because even though many people think that now with Bitcoin at 550K, 55, whatever, uh, it's it's late no no we are super early we are super early and and it's gonna grow even more now just ask yourself the question uh how many people have bitcoin right now and it's like a small percentage and then um go even uh, one step uh, uh, further how many bitcoiners actually understand what bitcoin is can actually answer the question. I have a few friends that also are full in Bitcoin. I am for sure if I ask them 20 questions at question number eight, they don't know the answers. Of course, I mean, me, of course. I I, 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 can, I, I know like I'm 100% Bitcoin. I consume a lot of content in, of Bitcoin. But if you start asking me a question, I've been in the Honey Badger in Riga last year. And some speeches, for me, they were talking about, I don't know, some things that I don't even understand. So, yeah, of course. So we are so early, what uh, the education is also like, even um, 
there's, there's also some interesting statistic that would be really interesting to see. For example, uh, the hardware uh, wallet uh, um, um, uh, developers, the companies, of the hardware wallets, I would be really interesting uh, to see how many have a ledger, how many have a bitbox, how many have, like how many hardware wallets are out there. Mm -hmm. And it would be such an interesting number to see the adoption. Because if you have Bitcoin on exchange, I would say you didn't understand Bitcoin. Oh. <laughs> uh, oh. So how many people do you think are actually right now having Bitcoin in self-custody? Do you have like a number in mind? I, I know there's like maybe 100 million to 300 million people that have Bitcoin or a significant amount of Bitcoin okay. because of addresses. But how many actually have it in self-custody? Hop. 50% of these people? Or you Maybe, yeah. We are super, super duper early. And as this format uh, is a new format and a format that has uh, I've never done before, I'm halfway through the video uh, and I want to make a stop here because I want to see what is the reaction uh, of you guys. How long do you want to watch this? Uh, how many are actually interested in, in those kind of uh, videos? So leave me a comment down below if you are interested in me reacting to other podcasts, maybe even other videos that I've not been in. Like I just now start with that because I was not, thought like it's interesting because it's a long, a longer time ago uh, and then I can get into other stuff and then get into more uh, my thinking also. But uh, even if you have like, oh, please react to that video or that video or give us the opinion on that or that, that subject, please let me know. I'm also now gathering through the comments what... Uh, video ideas you have for me like do you want to have uh, for me like uh, to talk about self-custody uh, about uh, someone posted the 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 comment for to me where he said like please make a video about vienna and connecting it to the golden era connecting it to uh, how the uh, beautiful building were built and how this is maybe connected to sound money and bitcoin which is an interesting topic so i will collect all all of those amazing topics and make every once in a while maybe once a week or twice a week or every second week i don't know what what the thing will be uh additional videos on top of my normal podcast interviews with all the great bitcoiners i have to expand the show to different kind of formats will be really cool to see will be really interesting uh, where it goes leave me a comment what should i do what what do you want me to make content for uh, and uh, i already love uh, the the community here and i'm so thankful for you being here and you watching uh, my stuff it's 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 fascinating for me and i will always try to provide more value and i will always tailor it so it's the best content for bitcoiners and with that being said uh, I'll, I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Bye-bye.